up next to the Mar Army Rock Show. I'm going to introduce him as guitar player Brandon Cook because I don't know uh, which one of the many projects to really put at the forefront of what he's got going on right now. So we're going to touch on some black and blue, some metal morphosis, some loyal order, and everything else he's got going on. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on here, Rocky. This is this is great. Looking forward to this. So, um, I guess what I really want to start with is because I've always loved Black and Blue as a band. So, if I delve into a little bit of Black and Blue stuff first, um, tell me a little bit about your entry into the band. How did that happen for you? Well, um, five years ago, um, I had, I kind of started to get to know a couple of the members of the band because our our old guitar player Sean Sun and Shine worked at at Dante's Bar and Grill. He like where everyone used to play in Portland, and I think there was there was some shuffling going on in the band, and and he said, "You need to come replace me in Black and Blue," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and because uh, he was, I guess things were going on, and he was gonna have to bow out for some reason, and and about a year later, uh, Whoop left the band. And I believe that's for was for health reasons. I'm not not exactly sure why, but. Um, he he left the group and a couple other guys were auditioning around town and Patrick called me one day when I was on the way to a Slayer tribute rehearsal and <laughs> I, w- I walked around a grocery store while he explained to me what he wanted me to what he, what he wanted me to do to to join the band and it was really great it, it just from the very get go the band had this higher level of professionalism than I'd previously worked with as, as specifically with guitar playing and like how the expectation of of excellence was for the band because you go in and people in the audience are like guys from warrant and guys from rat and you know just really guys i look up to amazing players and really cool people and so the the entry into the band was five years ago 2013 in fact somebody just sent me yesterday my my uh anniversary of the first gig i did (laughs) and and i was like oh wow that's cool man i can't believe i've been in the band for five years now like when the band was kind of in you know when that genre of music was in its heyday black and blue was it uh, wasn't like you know the i don't want to say they were underground but they weren't as nationally known as some of the other bands is it possible that they're like bigger now than they were in the 80s and 90s um no i don't i don't think so but the we we have kind of maintained like a pretty good level of visibility because the the people that still enjoy that music they go on all the monsters of rock cruises and they go to all the festivals and you know like m3 in maryland or like you know the the rocklahoma and all that stuff and they you know we've black and blue's gotten to do some of that stuff so there's a lot of people that know that we're out here doing what we're doing uh we don't have like a record company backing us up with you know thousands of dollars of advertising stuff you know getting us around but you know everybody in the band promotes what we do and you know we go out when we go out and do the shows we give it 110 percent and that's that's kind of what we always have been about just like going out there and giving it the best absolute best show that you possibly can give and uh I'd like to think that we're bigger now than, but than then, but <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> I think it, it, you hit on a lot with the M3 festival and the rock cruises and all. I mean, it, I was just so pumped the first time I saw Black and Blue on the bill at M3, and I can just remember because uh, I hadn't heard those songs in so long live. You know, it was just amazing. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the rock cruises. We do a lot of those things. Give us from the artist perspective uh, what the rock cruise is like for you. You know, that Monsters of Rock cruise for me. Uh, it, I've never been treated so well in a in a music situation. Before I joined Black and Blue, it was always hunt my own gear, you know, like get all your stuff ready. No no guitar techs, no nothing like that. And then when you get on the cruise, it's like your room's paid for, food's paid for, the whole thing's paid for. Everybody wants to buy you drinks, and <laughs> so there's that the <laughs> nice the nice rock star part of things that like I don't expect or you know I. I enjoy it but i don't expect it but then there's like just the professionalism that the staff treats you with they like know that you want to be everybody everybody knows when they come on that cruise you better be loaded for bear because the (laughs) band right after you could be better than you (laughs) and and they could have like you know millions of more records sold than you too you know or they could be just you know a really really great band so you got to come loaded ready to roll and kill it you know 
know, you got like, you got plenty of time to set up and do all that stuff. But, you know, we get, you know, top sound guys and top lighting guys. And so they make you look and sound great. And there's a little, I mean, for me, as a, you know, kind of a newcomer, Jamie St. James and Patrick and Pete, they've all been rock stars for 30 years. And, you know, I respect them immensely. But when I come out there, I only have like five years of being in this band. Every Before that, I wasn't really nationally known at all for anything, just playing, playing you know, with my Guns N' Roses tribute band. So I came in wanting to really impress them and then you know impress the audience and just get the love that they give back when you give give it your all it's it's really different you know the the audience the, this is like the best audience i've ever played for in my life they just love the music so much they know especially in europe like when we went to england they we did this thing called Firefest, and everyone knows yeah. all the records and like who the producer was and all that stuff. <laughs> the same thing with the Monsters of Rock Cruise people because they come from all over the world. They they're all just dedicated, rabid fans to this style of music, which is you know '80s hard rock. You know, some people call it glam, some people call it hair metal, whatever. But the it's basically just '80s hard rock, and they know everything about all the guys in the band who ever been there before. You know. Why isn't Tommy Thayer in the band? Why isn't Jeff in the band? You know, like, you know, and I'm like, well, Tommy's got a great gig. <laughs> but, well, uh, man, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed every time I've ever seen Black and Blue perform live, and those cruises are some of my very favorite rock and roll memories ever. Hey, man, you're not limited to Black and Blue, so geez, where do we even begin? Tell us a little bit about uh, what Metamorphosis is. Okay, Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis has been a project that I've been working on since 2014. Um, my friend Andy Korn was a drummer that I met, you know, through a through a mutual friend, and he just he always has a lot of ideas. And one time he saw me play with our singer Larry Smith, and Larry and I played. I think it was a bunch of Dio stuff. No, it was a all Richie Blackmore set. So I had to do all the Richie Blackmore solos and stuff like that. And Larry was covering Dio and uh, Ian Gillen and uh, I'm spacing on Glenn Hughes. And so he did all those things and he heard us play together and he was just like, we have to do a project and I've got this idea. I want to do a, all jazz songs, but rewrite them as metal songs. And I went, are you serious? And he was, do you really want to do that? And he's like, yes. And I have this great idea for how we can do it. So, you know, we all got together for our first meeting. And we just, we, I think we wrote about three or four arrangements right there. And because I'm, I don't know, I'm writing all the time. So when I sat down, I'm always ready, ready to just like try out riffs and try out stuff. And he, uh, everybody loved what we were doing and Larry had great vocal melody ideas because we re didn't only we just kept the lyrics mostly we had a little bit of melody ideas but like we kept the lyrics as the solid part you know so we have like Frank Sinatra we got Ray Charles and uh, I think there was like a Nat King Cole one in there too but um, just all kinds of different jazz songs that were that we rewrote and so there's big long epic heavy metal guitar solos and the, you know <laughs> tapping and stuff they would never put in a jazz song ever and and it's just been really fun going through the recording process and creating and recreating these these tunes and so the record has it came out in December I think it was December 23rd and it's gotten a really good reception we have like I think it's like 100,000 views on our on our video. I can't remember. I know uh, the last time I saw it, I, I said it, I quoted 50,000 views, and Andy was very quick to say, no, it's more. <laughs> <laughs> it's then, way more than that, dude. <laughs> and then you guys are doing, uh, tell them a little bit about the holiday tune, too. Oh, um, it's kind of under wraps right now, but we did a completely original Halloween or, uh, not Halloween, but a uh, holiday song. Uh, the idea is for, it's a little bit darker side of the holidays, but uh, just because it's metal, you know, and we've we've always tried to keep a little bit of like, we have like Spell on You, which is, and are like, uh, we did My Favorite Things, but we always tried to have like a little bit of the dark, 
dark side of things like strangers in the night <laughs> you know so that <laughs> sounds a darker or whatever and it's just fun so this particular song is a lot more like i would say it's more extreme on the extreme metal side of things like thrash metal and like death metal and stuff like that and we and but there's still you know a really great melody for the vocal line too so we were just trying out something different because like it, the the project itself lend, lends it to a very open palette for metal we call it metal morphosis and most people that like metal they don't just stick to just 80s metal or black metal or death metal or anything like that they like a lot of different stuff so we especially in europe too where we're kind of focusing our marketing we've been focusing our marketing over there and because everybody seems like everybody loves metal there's just huge giant metal festivals everywhere in europe so we kind of focus it over there and we're working on a, a distribution deal just to try to get you know physical copies or um more presence in in europe but uh as far as like creativity the christmas song it's going to come out this i hope it comes out this year we've been working on it really really hard uh done a few big recording sessions to try to get everything done i'm playing bass and guitar again and um andy had never really played like blast beats before and we <laughs> we got some really great stuff on this song it's really fun so so as if you weren't busy enough we talked a little bit about black and blue and metamorphosis and then yet still floating around out there is the loyal order so uh, let's let's talk about that one for a while well the loyal order um that that actually evolved from a television spot that we that we worked on we the there was a guy who had a show for comcast sports net northwest and he needed a theme so we got together with him and he described what he wanted and we came up with this song called off the grid superhuman and it was the theme song for this television show i, I think the song the show was called off the grid but they had to change it and Anyway, the the creator Jeff Cox and he was really generous with with you know paying us to do the thing and it ended up being you know a really good song for us because all our friends heard it and all of a sudden we had this buzz but no band <laughs> and everybody loved the song and we're just like uh, okay you know and <laughs> we'll try to put something together and you know we wrote we're actually finishing our album right now we're gonna be putting out a song and a video for that song coming up very soon. This, uh, this song uh, is called Ready for Dead, and it's, it's actually written by our producer. And we decided to do this song and made a few changes to the arrangement and stuff like that. But after we got through with it, the song is, is one of the best songs we've done for this band. And we all looked at each other and went like, okay, we have to make it more than this. So we remixed it and remixed it and remixed it to make the mix perfect. And we sent it out to this really high profile mastering guy. Uh, it'll, all that information will come out when, <laughs> when it gets released. <laughs> but like, the, we've spent a lot of good solid money on making a great video. The, 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 producer of the video was is the keyboard player for dan reed network and the director of the video was uh, the drummer for the dan reed network it's uh, rob dacre they were huge in in the 80s they opened for like i think uh i'm pretty sure they opened for the rolling stones at one point <laughs> that's big yeah they, yeah they, they they've had a lot a long solid run of great songs and stuff and they've been kind of involved in helping us, you know, move forward with the low order, and it's it, the creativity of, the, of working with these guys is really high level. So we're like pushing them get this stuff out. And our our producer for the song is Rob Dacre. He's just really pushing me to the max of what I can do. And Jeff's vocals are like he's really made Jeff such a much better singer. We Jeff came in as just the bass player for the project at the very beginning, like five years ago. And he was definitely the visionary for the project. You know, we, we work together and have like a co-vision of what's going on. But he, he asked me to be involved and kind of spearheaded the project. And he's 
become so much more than a bass player. He's a great songwriter, visionary, and just amazing partner to work with. He just kicks so much ass. <laughs> and this this song is going to be uh, this is going to be sort of the culmination of all that we've done. And then we're remixing some of our old songs and re re put new drums on the original drum place that we recorded and had a, a low ceilings and we wanted it to sound um, bigger so we re-recorded the drums and then i ended up re-recording guitar parts and to really match the the aesthetic of the new pro product that we're putting out and man i'm just sitting here blown away like this is my album yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable you know and you know the metamorphosis stuff has that same high attention to detail too not to take anything away from that, we, we're using Sammy Hagar's mixing guy, Jamie Durr, and he made us, I mean, like, we did a lot of this stuff low budget to, to try to keep it, the expenses down for making it, but when we got Jamie Durr to mix it, all of a sudden the stuff we did in a smaller studio became huge, larger than life, and I, I'm still just unbelievable, I just feel that I have this un unbelievable opportunity to make two records in, the, in a year of, you know, the best stuff I've ever done. And, and plan for Black and Blue by, by the same time, by the way, right? <laughs> Not a bad yeah, little year. Yeah, plan for Black and Blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Jamie, if you're listening, I'd... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, would love to, I would love to write with Jamie, but he, he, he is... Just, uh, He's just not really interested in that right now. The music business is really tough, yeah. you know. And when when you go out to to make records and stuff like that, you got to invest a lot of time and money. And you know the that time and money is if you've made really great records already that are like the pinnacle of your career, it's, and nobody's going to pay you for the new one. It's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's hard to go back and and go. You know. I want to do that again. <laughs> and well, right now, right now, I'm lucky enough to to have two other projects where we're all all, all in for for kind of investing the investment part of things. And Black and Blue has such an amazing back catalog. It's like I don't I don't think I, it would be really hard to like top that. It's so great. I think so. Yeah. Those so those songs were so, so timeless, but yet, yeah, I, I agree. I don't know how you could top some of those tunes, but. Um, Hey, uh, so I want to uh, thank you for being here, man. So uh, this is Brandon Cook no of Black and Blue, Metamorphosis, Loyal Order, and multiple different projects where I want to give you a chance to plug your artist page because that's where people can go because you've got a bunch of other uh, you know, tribute bands and stuff here in as well. So why don't you let people know where to find uh, all the stuff going on in your life? Okay, so if you want to find out more about me, my website, www.brandoncookmusic.com. That's a really great place to find me on Facebook. Um, just find me at my artist page for Brandon Cook. Um, I'm on Instagram, Brandon Cook uh, underscore BNB. &B. And let's see, where else? Uh, the Loyal Order is going to be available on iTunes. Um, the the Metamorphosis is already available on CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon, all the everything that the CD Baby funnels through. Um, we have some videos up on Metamorphosis fan page on Facebook. We have some videos on YouTube of all the Loyal Order stuff. I think you have to look up uh, there's so the songs that we have, the Loyal Order. We have um, Off the Grid, Superhuman, I Fall Silent, and what's the other one? I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to look out too, for Ready for Dead. Too Ready many projects to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a good problem to have. So Yeah. You know, the in the music biz right now it's like if you don't stay busy, you you're not gonna you can't really succeed. So like pretty much all the, the guys I know, they're in four or five bands, you know, always pushing forward, doing studio work, teaching lessons, you know, and you know, I'm I'm really blessed to be working with some of the people I'm working with. It just, I, I, five years ago when I started in Black and Blue, I can't imagine of like having like two world-class professional records, professionally recorded records coming out in the same year. That, that just blows me away. Well, it's, why we wanted, it's why we wanted to get you on the show, man. And uh, you're a super, super talented guy. We love watching you and keeping watching you on stage. And uh, we're going to keep following all your projects, man. And uh, hope to have you back on the show at, at a later date and catch up with everything you got going on in all your bands. 
Thanks, Rocky. I really appreciate you having me. It's it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure to, to chat with you, and I, I hope you have a, a wonderful uh, week.